This is Left Side of the Brain, and tonight I want to talk about once you discover the true meaning of life, life has no purpose. I was laying here and um I couldn't get I couldn't get you know couldn't get sleepy because I had all these thoughts coming in my mind and it just revealed itself to me. Um, some call it God. I just call it truth revealing itself. And, you know, I thought to myself, I said, you know, once you, once you grow out of the, the materialistic desires, once you mature, and I'm not talking about physical maturity. I'm talking about spiritual maturity. Once you grow up spiritually, once you lose the desire for needs and wants in life, you get to a point where you realize that everything is just purposeless, pointless, once you get to a certain level, because, you know, when you're a child, you are discovering the world around you, you're touching everything, you reach for the, the socket, and your mom says, no little Johnny, no little Timmy, don't touch that, you know, you don't know right from wrong, you're not thinking about you know, concepts, you're not thinking about purpose. When you're young, when you're a child, you're just existing in the realm of discovery. And then you reach a certain age and you start to realize that people are pretty much uh, in the way. You start to realize that people uh desire the same things that you desire you start to realize that life is a race you start to realize that life is about the haves and the have nots and you start to develop selfishness and i think for one thing um i think like selfishness is a trait that's inside of us since a child. You ever try to take something from a baby and it it doesn't want to give it up? Like, we are born with a natural desire to take. Before we learn how to give, we learn how to take. I think that taking trait that's inside of us that's the first self survival so you try to take something from a baby no it don't want to share we call it selfishness but it's really surviving the first instinct of a baby is survival and when you build upon that it's once you like me i'm and this video is non-scripted. I'm just, you know, freestyling. Once you look backwards, once you grow up, you start looking back at things. Remember how you was. And, you know, once you uh, grow to a certain point, you realize that you're not in the stage of a baby discovering the world, touching everything, looking out the window, looking at strange faces, you start to grow up and you start putting putting the mathematics together. Once you learn how to read, once you learn how to count, you start putting the mathematics together. Then you see the sum total of everything. It's like being in a math class and then graduating to the next level of math and then getting into the the advanced classes, you start to see, once you complete a level, it's no need to go back to K-5, you, you know K-5 mathematics, 
So it would be pointless to just go through a K-5 math class because you already, you know, you already conquered that. So it's basically the same for this life. Once you reach a certain level, once you get over the needs and the desires and wanting to be accepted, once you break those chains, you you get into this, you leave one prison, you leave one prison, the prison that they once had you in, and then you end up in another prison. I call it like a spiritual solitude chamber where you you have broken the chains and then the prison becomes isolation, seclusion within your own freedom. So it's like your freedom becomes almost a prison in itself. And I think what it is, it's really like the outer realms of the breaking away. Within the outer realms of the breaking away, it's like this pulling. It's almost as if the memories of the past, the things that you used to enjoy, it turns into like a black hole suction. Those memories, those past desires, it's almost like a drug calling you back. It's like the crack pipe, the crack pipe of this life of what you was once addicted to. It's like calling you back, pulling you almost like a gravitational pull. Um, I think it's almost akin to the way the planets revolve around a gravitational pull and it's almost like because everything is consciousness because everything that we view must pass through the gates of our prism and then it's released into the world around us you know you see objects and they they upside down your mind sees them upside down and then you view it right side up. It's almost like the consciousness is a reflection of the universe. So what I'm saying is you, you get away from the world, but yet the gravitational pull, the memories are like the, the orbit of the planets, the sun. The moon, it has, it's still like this gravitational pull on your consciousness. Even though you've been free, <clears throat> the question is, what's next? Right? It's like, what's next? Where do I go from here? And the, the past life was pointless, but the freedom becomes is freedom, but you, you question it like, this is freedom, but what do I do with this freedom? I just sit here in the darkness. And it kind of um, reminds me of, you know, when you read the Bible in Genesis, what was the Almighty doing just sitting in darkness? And then creation which is the opposite of nothing, nothingness, giving life to creation. But really, the creation came from the nothingness. So really, the creation is still nothingness because the creator is nothing. And the creation is nothingness. So it's almost like everything is just pointless unless you are God. And because God 
is self-sustainable, you don't, okay, because God is self-sustainable and because we are an extension of our own consciousness, we basically reflect who God is. We just a part of God inside of these shells, these bodies. But the questions, they stem from our internal quest for, for all the knowledge. And We, we know we in a shell, okay, but it's something in us that knows that this cannot be everything, because if it is, then this is pointless. So the question remains, if this is pointless, then... What's not pointless? Let that sink in for a second. If this is pointless, then what is not pointless? And then you wind up in a circular reasoning within yourself, just like the orbit of the planets. You see what I'm saying? They just circling around. And if you like, like, let me let me back up because I thought about this before I did the video. So I don't want it. I had to think about it twice. I laughed while while I was laying in the bed. So it hit me like that and I'm going to say it again. You ask yourself if this is pointless then what is not pointless? And you start over again cuz once you come up with an answer for what's not pointless. Once you discover whatever is not pointless, it then becomes pointless again because it's self-sustainable, just like the universe orbiting, you know, it's pointlessly, we're pointlessly rotating and orbiting. Okay. Now, I said that God is self-sustainable. Once you don't need anything, you basically, you don't exist. Because think about it. That's why this knowledge makes you not want to be here anymore. Once you don't need people, you lose your purpose. So when y'all are like listening to this information, in a way, you're playing with fire. Because if you're not a strong-minded person, you will just take yourself out of here. You will just, you know what? I'm not going to say, but you know what I mean. You will just take yourself from off this planet. Um, Like, God, it's like only, if you're not God... It's really no need for you to be here because when you are <coughs> in between being God or the devil, you're just like the, the, the ball that's getting whacked back and forth on the ping pong table. If you can imagine one one ping pong, uh, I don't know what you call them, um, paddles, tennis brackets, whatever. One of them being God and another being the devil. And you, the person in the middle, the soul, that's just being whacked back and forth. That's basically um, what, what you end up being. So, But discovering this truth, it, it takes you back to being supreme. The God being. The all-knowing. The self-sustainable. And once you get back to that all-knowing realm, there's nothing to know. Because 
this information that we're learning, it has no, it has no bearing on existence. Like I say, love is not necessary for life. Because you can do everything that you need to do to survive without love. You can have sex, create a baby without love. You can eat without having love. You can take a shower, drink water. You don't need love for anything to exist. You know, just take them concepts out of your mind like love, hate. All of those are just concepts that really don't even exist. Like time itself doesn't even exist. God is just pure consciousness. And when I say pure, just void of everything. Okay? Self-sustainable. And what I'm trying to say is an atom just purely exist just to exist it doesn't have to have a purpose the protons the neutrons the electrons all of those things that makes up an atom they just exist in fact if somebody didn't even name the particles that make up an atom it wouldn't even matter they would still just exist Without a name given to it. You see? And this is kind of how this knowledge, this is what it all means. This is the end all. You know what I'm saying? There has to be an end all to all of this information on this channel. There has to be. And one thing that I know is that everybody want to be free. Everybody wants to be free and everybody wants to dominate and conquer, whether your fears, your shortcomings, everybody wants to be successful. It's just it just goes to happen that somebody else's success may be the next person's demise. The devil, he want to be successful. Somebody else's evil may be good for them. Take Jeffrey Dahmer, for instance. He killed many people. He was a serial killer. He was satisfying his need. Now, one may say it was evil if they were on the the opposite end of his terror, but to him... He was fulfilling a passion. He was taking a life, but at the same time, he was feeding a need. And we can call it evil. We can call it whatever, whatever you like. I'm not saying I support what he did. I'm just saying, looking at it from a objective standpoint. So it's just like this whole organic portal realm thing, everything we're talking about. It's, it boils down to, like I always say, us versus them. We live in a suction, a black hole that's not going down without a fight. Its purpose is to live off of all of you. The machine needs you in order to survive. And the only way to defeat it, to defeat it, is to Disconnect your emotions from it. Once you disconnect your emotions, the last thing that will be left 
the last wires that you would have to unplug would be, let's say, fleshly appetites, like the need for sex, wanting to have sex, hunger pains in your stomach. All of these things are built around your soul. Your soul is connected to nerve endings, blood vessels, a skeletal frame, the need for oxygen to carry or the need for blood and oxygen to to carry oxygen to the brain. That's what blood is for. Blood is just to carry oxygen to your brain. So your soul is a gas that's wrapped up in all of this, this, what I like to call this biological computer shell that we live in. The only difference between you and organic portals, you have a soul and they have an empty shell. But they live off of your soul. They sucking. They parasites. They don't have personal souls. They live off of your soul. You see, that takes us into um, the dimensional aspect of it all. You know, it's a prison. The dimension that we live in is a prison. What I'm saying to you right now is coming from out of this world. It's not this dimension. It's coming from another dimension. Because think about it. Where do your thoughts come from? They don't come from the third dimension. They come from the fifth dimension, that inner part of you. Like when you go dream and you escape this world and then you wake up in the morning you back in this world you know what that means when you dream it's basically like you're still not free from this prison it's like you know how prisoners are just released to go out on a prison yard that's basically what it is you go out into the prison yard and then your soul didn't leave the uh the dimension that we that we're in it didn't leave the third dimension you just went outside of the of the ground level of the third dimension and i'm having to make up terminology as i go because this type of like i say information is not in books and things like that you know you have to talk about it very gingerly so you, you will leave, but then you come back. What makes you come back? The magnetic pull, the memory, the desires. People want to say that life has a purpose because they are desiring things that they never had. So they want to experience something. And they are calling what they want to experience purpose, but they've been dishonest. Just because you want to buy a house one day and get married, that's not purpose. That's you desiring something. But that's not that's not something to say that life has a purpose. Don't get the two twisted. You you just desiring those things. You just want to do those things. But those things that you desire and want to do, it doesn't hold the galaxies together so it's not it doesn't have a point the point would be if what you are desiring holds the galaxy together does it keep the planets in orbit no it doesn't your son winning a trophy at uh, the spelling bee or a baseball game or your daughter going to see her first cheerleader competition that doesn't hold a planet together 
These are just things that we've looked at from a child. And, you know, I want to grow up to be a fire truck driver. Who implanted that in you? Who implanted that in you? You wouldn't know what a fire truck driver was had somebody not showed it to you. Even these words that I'm using right now is really, I'm bar- they borrowed words. I didn't create these words. They, they are part of the program. You know what I mean? It's other words that we could really say that would have way more power than even these words that I'm using right now. We've been given lower vibrational words to communicate with each with each other. That's why that's why in the English language you always you can't get the truth in these words because they'll always find a way to contradict themselves. That's just how it happens. They'll always contradict themselves. Like for instance, we say a whole we say holes, right? Like we'll say a donut hole. But really, there's no hole in the donut. Because the donut is just a wheel. The little, the little, what we're calling a hole is just the space in the wheel. Of the donut, but it's not a hole in the donut itself, but technically it is a hole. The donut itself is a hole. So you see how even trying to explain that is a contradictory statement? Because that's what these, that's what this language does. It contradicts itself because they didn't even give us the right language to free ourselves. And getting back to the whole thing, I got something called a whole theory where I say uh, holes don't exist because, you know, when you zero in on anything, it all becomes holes anyway, tiny, tiny holes. And what is a hole? If you drew a circle, even the, the, the circle, the line, if you zero, zero in on a line, it'll just turn into smaller and smaller and smaller particles. And they all got holes. And then when you, when you separate like, like bubbles, you ever seen, um, two bubbles, you blow some bubbles. That's a good way to explain it. And one bubble will stick to the other one. And you can see two bubbles. Okay, if you pop the bubble, when you break the wall between the two bubbles being stuck together, that's basically what I'm saying. Like, you can do that forever. When you remove the the wall, no hole exists whatsoever. It's just like rooms in your house. Once you kick the walls down, you realize that those separators... They are not solid because solid doesn't even exist. If something was solid, really, you couldn't break it down. You see how these words lie to us? It's not solid. If it was solid, it wouldn't be able to to fall and break. Because the wall is made up of many, many, many holes like those bubbles that stick together. It's almost like if you build a house out of bubbles and the bubbles are just sticking together by a layer of water the water is like a sticky glue it has like an elasticity to it and then the bubbles stick together so it's almost like a house built out of bubbles but really once you pop the bubble the house don't exist no more because it was just an illusion that it was solid, but it wasn't solid. It was an illusion that 
it was a bubble, but really it was just liquid in a uh, very, very highly condensed state. And then the oxygen molecules is just holes. And just like those bubbles, those thin walls are just smaller, 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 smaller particles. Part and it goes all the way to the point where it zeroes in to nothing, to things that you can't even explain. So that's my point. The more and more you live in this world, the more contradictory it seems, the more contradictory it becomes. You know what I mean? And that's why I say to myself sometimes, like, only God has the reason to be here. Like, only God has the reason to be here. If you're not God, then your point here is pointless. They talk about God and the devil in this eternal conflict, but it's like they know what it's all about. They not falling for the illusion. One builds the illusion. Let's just use it in this scenario example. One builds the illusion, the devil, and one knows how to end it, which would be God. But then you got to say to yourself, if God knows that the devil uh, if God knows, if God is all powerful and the devil knows that God is all powerful, but the devil builds the illusion, why won't God just come and destroy it? You know, then you got to say, how, how, how is this God more powerful than the devil then? And then it just dawned, it dawned upon me when I was um contemplating that even before i did this video it, it dawned upon me that the thing is god cannot uh he can't what's the word i was about to use he can't um the word i was about to use he can't um infringe that's the word i wanted to use he can't infringe upon your free will because you are free. And if he infringed upon your free will, he wouldn't be God. That wouldn't be positive. Nobody want to be controlled. And that's why this type of information is all about freeing your soul. You, But you got to make the choice to disconnect. God is not going to take your hand and just do it for you. You got the power to do it. Uh... uh the, the organic portal realm 